Alrighty, folks, good morning and welcome to the Coffee Room with John from ProCraps on Casino Gaming TV. I've got my microphone working, I got the camera working today. I think we got it nailed. I think I've, after three years, maybe I can start a show off correctly. So, uh, yeah, good morning. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day to you and your spouses also. Um, let's uh, let's just jump right in today and get a, and go, go over our, 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 our kind of top of the mind things, and then I want to get into the table a little bit and play. I've actually got to, I got to dig something off off my phone here. I want to I want to try a little little craps work at the table here before I start doing the the lecture piece today. Um, reminders tomorrow night trip around the table with me and Ken from Ken Knows Gambling. If you got questions, again for the trip around the table, and I've saved the questions from all of our shows so far. I'm going to end up having a stable of like probably 10, 15, 20 questions that I can ask at each spot at the table. Um, if you're new to that show, by the way, what I do is I take a guest. Last week I had Chris from Dice DJN on, and I shoot from every spot. I shoot from the end, the hook, stick left or stick right one, stick left one, the hook, and then the end. And at each station of the table, I do one shooter. Um, I have one drink. My guest has one with me if they drink, and we ask one question. And that one question cannot be a gambling thing. It cannot be about gambling. It can be about anything else. We can ask a light politics question, a light religion question. We asked Chris last week how he handles road rage. Like, you know, it's just, and, and it's fun because the, 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 the talk takes some weird turns, um, which is the point, right? It's not gonna be always extra entertaining. It's not gonna be informative. Um, it might be a little off-putting. Sorry, the whole point of that show is to be regular people while craps is happening. It's not to be a craps lesson, right? That's the whole point. It's just letting her hair down, letting her hair down, having some fun. So tomorrow, I can tell you this for sure. Ken from Kendo's Gambling, that dude knows how to let his hair down and say what's up. So I think we have some, some good good time planned for us tomorrow. So if you got um, if you got anything you want to ask Ken, um, then for sure, um, put the questions in the chat. You can put a like a QQ in front of them or something like that, or put a Ken or KKG in front of it, and I'll make sure I, I add it to my list of questions for tomorrow night. Um, also, a couple of quick announcements. The Shooters Tournament is happening starting March. That's a, a George from CY is gonna be kind of running that thing um, over at Craps Nation. I'll be one of the hosts. I'll probably enter in myself to, to shoot, but I don't expect to win. I expect to be more of a host on that show. Um, it's it's a good one. We, hit, we did it last year. It was a lot of fun. Um, it, it, it's more, like I said, it's more about like, okay, can we shoot great? Fine. That, that's I know that that's the the ultimate goal of this thing. But really, it's about like like a lot of people you see in the chats. Like I think Kev the carpenter is going to be in it this year. Um, if, if you got a table and you got a cell phone, be in it. Right. Be, end of the tournament. Um, it's a good way to like I said put faces to the names we see in chat all the time. And whether you can shoot good or not doesn't matter. Look at yours truly. Right. Um, get in there and have fun with it. And and uh, it, it's just, like I said, it's a good chance to meet a bunch of new people, and that's it. Players tournament's coming up as well. Details to follow soon. But figure around March, we're going to start a players tournament um, that will last all the way through Craps for the Cure. That's the idea. Um, I'm also still shopping. Today, today I'll, I'll finish it. I'm going to find the right provider to help us do our Yoathon, which is going to be, and I've talked to a couple of people, um, about logging the throws, obviously. And so every 11th throne from March 1st till September 1st will go into a fund. Um, you're all gonna pledge, if you want to, a penny or 11 cents or whatever you wanna pledge per yo throne on all of our shows. And at the end of September, you can make one donation, right? And, and we're not looking for a ton. I mean, think about it, right? If, if, if you put 11 cents per yo, right? And we, and we have 100 yos, it's gonna cost you $11, right? It's not like it's... And not like it's we're asking for a huge donation, but if 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 a thousand people donate eleven cents per eleven, and end up donating some money, right? That's going to help uh, the scholarship fund. And all the money for that's going to go to Layla. That's going to go to Chiro Muchi's daughter Layla, Chiro from Midmo Yo Channel. We're going to try and raise money for her every year. I want I want his legacy um, to live on through us. As long as we have channels, we're going to do this thing. Once we have the the platform to do it on, I want to do this every year and keep that family. Um, who meant so much to all of us kind of in our thoughts all the time. Um, and yeah, I should have an announcement also on the uh, on the Craps for the Cure scene too. I'm trying to get those negotiations finished up um, for how that's going to look next year as well. So expect a lot of announcements in the next coming weeks about these things. Um, don't know if you caught it last night, but um, Ed and and his his partner um, released their, their latest Casino Tears podcast. They're going every Tuesday for about a half an hour, which is good. Um, I like that show. Um, I hope that they... 
Um, keep it to a half an hour. It's the right length. I tried podcasting. It's very hard to keep it to a half an hour. As you know, I'm a talker. Um, and I think it's hard to do it alone. I think having two people back and forth like that and one person that's editing things down makes that way more listenable than what I tried to do. So A, hope they keep it to a half an hour. B, hope they keep going because it's good. It's good to just have some storytelling once in a while, right? I like, you know me, I like my, I like stories better than I like uh, all the teaching, even though I'm a teacher, <laughs> right? I enjoy hearing stories. And it's the perfect length for walking the dog or going to the store. So good job, good job, uh, Ed, on that one. Keep it going. Um, all right, let's review the daily paycheck really quick. And then we'll uh, we'll go to the table here. Um, I'm playing the Dallas drawdown. We haven't logged any any money yet. Okay, yesterday we would have lost about seven. Actually, Monday I would have won whatever a thousand bucks. Yesterday I would have lost twenty. No, I would have lost eleven hundred bucks yesterday or something like that. Today we won about three k. Whatever the number, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm not logging it. I think I've played now. Yesterday, five sessions. Today, four sessions. Monday, two sessions. We've probably simulated a month of play in the last three days. This strategy is so fast, right? You're going to win. If you catch it, you're going to win your paycheck in three rolls, right? If you don't catch it, you're going to lose your loss, your loss limit in one roll. It, it's literally, it's, 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 it's kind of a YOLO. Um, I don't know if I like the YOLO aspect of it, but I do like the play style. So um, it's really a bankroll thing. Right. If I'm playing the drawdown at a casino, which I have done, and I'm going to do more of because my my tables now have dropped to five bucks. We have five dollar tables here in Seattle, which is awesome for me. Right. My bankroll has lowered a little bit in the last few months. There's lots of reasons for that. We can talk later. Um, but to, to me, the five dollar table now is perfect. Right. Going out there at 128 across and going 128 to 64 to 32, the three level drawdown to me, perfection. Like it just works out. It puts 50 bucks in the rack. I'm playing out there at 32 across and I can just shoot for the ceiling with it. Um, it's great, right, at that level. At this big level, it's painful to lose the, the 1200 bucks, right? But again, it's relative to the size of your bankroll. Losing 1200 bucks sucks mentally, but really when it's just part of what you bought in for and it's designed to do that, you have to be okay with that. And I think it's a, it's, it's a mental game for us right now. So. Um, I put an alternative out there, which I'll show you here at the table this morning and see what you all think of this of this, of this alternative to it. And um, let's just talk through it and see how the Dallas Drawdown can work in one of, of two configurations, okay? So there's there's um, the kind of the run-up to it. And again, we're doing okay, right? Overall, we're up about $11,000 roughly. This These numbers here are not, are not, are not up to date. I got to add a couple of logs in here. But we're doing good. We've doubled our bankroll from the beginning here. And again, we're doing it very carefully. So it's working out kind of kind of so far. Um, we'll see. We'll see if the drawdown adds to our bankroll or if it is soul crushing. I have a feeling it could go either way, which again, going back to kind of what the drawdown's all about, it's like I want the paycheck plays to be reliable. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be sweating for my paycheck. This one makes me feel like I'm sweating for a roll, but honestly, it's pretty damn easy. You know, I'd like it to be, you know, get in, get out, get it done. I want to go to the casino at five o'clock in the morning, get the dice, take a warm up toss or two, you know, from the pass line, and then go out there and get this thing done, you know, and just be in and out and go get my 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 Denny's breakfast, my moons over my hammy, and be home before six. That's what I that's what I want. This one fits that bill as long as I can avoid the seven. Okay. Anyway, here we go. Let's um before I go to the the, the the talk of the day, right? And our talk of the day here is, is gonna be, um, we're gonna get into uh, into this, the bankroll and accounting stuff. But before that, let's go to the table. Let's actually just go out there and, and, and play um, a little bit of the drawdown. And I wanna, I wanna run through some options with you as I go through it. Things that I ran into today. And um, let's just have you all talk um, in the chat. And maybe what we can do in the chat here is this. I'm gonna put a filter on my chat. Um, I'm gonna put DD on my filter. If you have a thought on the Dallas drawdown, okay, put a DD colon in front of your chat like this. I want you to do this. Say DD, DD colon sucks, okay? Whatever you think of the Dallas drawdown. That way I can find them. And I'm gonna go to the table here right now, and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you some options about what I was thinking about, A, this morning in the garage playing it, but also um, just kind of, uh, um, spitballing with you a little bit here. This is, again, part of why this this show exists is it's not just me spouting off what I think. 
sometimes we can spitball a little bit. All right, here we go. Um, let's set this thing up at the big level, but we can also, of course, simulate small. Here we go. The big level is this, and here's what I did this morning. Instead of going where I started the other day, okay, the first round of this thing was this. We're going to get, uh, I'll do the four and 10 is greens. We were at $100, four and 10, okay, 200, five and nine, and 240, six and eight. That makes 1080. That's, that's 880 inside, 980, 1080, 1100 bucks, essentially, right? Um, and every bet is divisible by four. So when I get a hit and it's 280, 275, 280, it's very easy for the dealers to go bring it down and split the bets. That was the reason why I switched the drawdown to being a half size bet. It goes to 120, this goes to 120, I gotta get some nickels, and there we are, right? That's the that's the the ease of this, right? The second hit, of course, we'll, we'll manage our rack here in a minute, I'll show you just kinda, I wanna just rerun all of it with you. Second hit pays 150, or 140 rather, 140. And the same move happens. There's a black, there's a green, there's some reds. We take it all down. We take down half of our bets rather. Sorry, half the bets come down. The other half of the bets get spread out. We're gonna take our greens and get $50, five and nine. We'll get a $60, six and eight. And a $25, four and 10. Now we're at 270 across. Right, 220 inside, 270. What does that do after that second hit? Remember, out for 1100, there's 1100. There's five, there's 1100. You have basically 100, 25, whatever. One, 130 or so, 140 depends, locked up in your rack. Profit, plus what's out here, okay? If you add all that up, let's get this all set. There's 100 bucks, okay? This is a quarter. We have 130 in the rack. We got 270 out top, right? 130 and 270. What does that add up to? That's 300 and 400 bucks, right? That's not bad. If I take my next hit here, that pays 75 for five on any number, and it all comes down, okay? Three hits. Three hits in, and we're at 100, 200, 300, 400, and 75 bucks, right? Basically 500 bucks in profit. That's a beautiful thing. Three hits to a paycheck. I love it. I love that. Now, the options I want to explore with you are this. Here's the two options we're going to look at. If you watch the daily paycheck, you know what's coming. What if we did this? What if we said, instead of even across, we really kind of hammered the inside. And so the inside is going to be at 1100, right? 20, 250, 250, 300, 300. It's the same thing as 110. It's 25, 30, 30, 25. Same thing as a 110 inside, but we're going to go with blacks, okay? We're way leveled up, okay? That's 1100, which is the same risk we had before. 1080 versus 1100, it's about the same. We could do this, okay? Get the four and 10 for 50 bucks each and ride those things out. Let the four and 10 essentially flip, okay? Play them like the 410 flip, never collect out here. Just let those be kind of a, a bonus baby, okay? Now maybe collect the black chip, but really the idea here is to flip those two, okay? Either one of them. You could also do the either one of them hits and we go. In other words, if a four hits for a hundred bucks, let's pay it in greens, right? 300 bucks and we split it, press them both. If either the four or 10 hit again, 100 would pay 200 bucks. And when you go back down, they've generated $300. So one hit or two hits of either of those could generate 300 in profit which is gonna match what the insides are. The insides are gonna pay 350. The idea is to use the four and 10 together to match the inside. We're gonna draw the insides down. Now watch what happens here. Let's go ahead and try this out, okay? We get a hit on the inside. Again, we're 1,200 bucks out, 1,100, 1,200. The first hit pays 350, and we're gonna take half the bets, like we always do. The five and nine get split to 125. The six and eight are gonna get split to 150. At a 1200 bucks on the initial risk, there's 900, okay? 500, 900 bucks. So you're out 300 bucks. You're net down 300 on the felt after one hit. You've recovered 900 of your 1200 bucks after one hit. Now the 350 could be profit and you go home, right? 
Oh, but on a second hit. On a second hit, it pays 175. And now you're done, right? You got your 350. If you brought all this crap down, let's, let's even leave the four and 10 out there for good measure, right? Who cares? There's our 1200 bucks that we started with. There's one, two, three, 425, 525. Two hits in, paycheck. With the bigger inside bets, you're two hits to a paycheck, which I love, okay? Now, that's only looking at inside hits. If the four or 10 happen to pop like we showed, it'll still work, but it takes two hits to get there. So that's the new, the new level, and I think people kind of liked that when I was doing it live today. Um, I think it's interesting. Now, the other thing to talk about is, um, we're we've been talking a lot, Waylon and I, of course, talk all the time, and this came up during the show yesterday, which is, this is very much like the Red Cross, in terms of, it's a lot of money out here, it's a couple of hits to glory, right? Could you combine the Baccarat with it, right? Could you combine the Baccarat play? And if you combine the Baccarat play, two things could happen. One is, um, you could still be at the big level, but you could actually lower this down some. This could be a 640 across deal instead of a 1200 across deal. We can go 640 across and do a proper drawdown from there, 640 to 320 to 160, and rock the line as part of that thing, or just rock the line as part of it anyway, right? So let's 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 actually roll it out here with the Baccarat line as part of the thing. Now watch how I'm gonna do this. We're gonna go ahead and use the line as part of this. Um, and you gotta kind of treat it as two separate things, but let's get the let's get the bets set back up again. We'll do the 1200 across like we just did. And again, this could be at any level, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna show it to you at the at the high end, just so you can see it at 1200 across. Um, we're gonna go um, with 100 on the pass line, just to kind of start somewhere. Doesn't matter where we start. Um, you should look at what happened last, I think upstairs. I actually look upstairs, my last thing I did was, was seven out, right? So last thing was seven out, so we'll go to the dome. We'll start from whatever happened last. Here we go, we're gonna come out. When you're playing the line piece of this thing, and you're up here, again, do you work the come out or not is a question with the drawdown. Do I work the come out or not? It's a YOLO kind of a play. Um, you're not gonna keep redoing this over and over again. So hopefully you avoid the seven for once. If you get planked here for 1300 bucks, not your day, you go home, right? That that's, would be the rule. Here's a five, a four, or, I'm sorry, rolled. Five, four, one, five. So in this case, what would happen is this. The point would go to the five. It pays 350 bucks, right? And we're gonna draw down the insides. We'll do what we just, we, we do what we just showed you. Five and nine go to 125, six and eight are gonna go to 150, and here's this weird case where you've got this extra goofy coverage. We're gonna pull that down. We're gonna have just the rest of the inside working for us, okay? So how's that affect the rack? Well, there's the 900 bucks, right, that we would have had coming off the table anyway. Um, actually, I'm sorry, that's 1,025. So again, we're out 1,300. I'll lay this out here. There's five. 1,025 bucks. We're looking for 1,300 to get out of this thing. Okay, there's roll one. If we buckshot the point, that'll suck. We'll lose 100 bucks. If we seven out, these would go away. That would win, and we start doing the line move as a separate maneuver. Okay, there is a six, five, one, six. So here we are. We'll be in profit. That's going to pay 200 for 25. 175 is the payment. And again, the insides now are going to come down here. I'm gonna have to get some change to make the bets. And there we go. We're gonna be at um, 50, 100, 50, 170 inside. Okay, instead of 220, now look at the rack. 1,000, 11, 12, 13. That's our, that's our whole starting foray. That's everything. That's the pass line, the don't pass, plus the across bet. We got 100 and 55 hours in profit locked. We're still playing and we're still playing. We're gonna play this a couple times in a row. Five, four, nine. That'll be 75 for five. And again, we're gonna bring them all down. Now we're gonna come all the way down to this. How nice is that, right? One, two, three, there's 200. 
350, 360 in profit, locked up profit, plus whatever that is out there. It's 125, uh, 135 out there. Okay, so again, that can come back in and be done. If you want to be done and let that don't pass just be your rock star, because there you go. There's your 500 bucks plus the don't pass is sitting there. And again, the Baccarat line just plays itself out, right? We'll let the, we'll let the numbers roll out here. Three hits, you got your complete paycheck, and we'll just see what happens on the line. Nine. Grab a seven here would be awesome, wouldn't it? There it is, the four, three, seven. You take an extra 100 bucks out of this thing, and now you've got one, two, three, four, five, six hundred and almost 700 bucks in profit. I like that piece of it. Now this, again, this could have gone south. We could have hit the five and lost that bet, and instead of, instead of that, you're going out to the pass line for 200 bucks, and you're gonna rock this, because I want this to win 500, and I want this to win 500. I think you can make a paycheck with both of those things, right? I think it's, a, it's an option for us. So I think adding the line to this adds some volatility, right? Now, if it's me playing this, what I probably do is I take the $100 win, right? And we'll stack it up. We'll at least press it by half, maybe do a full power press of that, or a full press of that thing, and try and rock that line. Try and rock the line on its own thing, okay? Yeah, put some of the profit at risk, but really trying to hammer that. So I want you to consider, I'm gonna go check chat now, a couple of options there, right? One is the bigger inside play as an option. Two is adding the line to it. Do you wanna add a Baccarat line to this thing and accelerate it? And if I do, should I go 640? Because I wanna show you what 640 looks like. We're gonna go ahead and do the, the 640 drawdown. And if I did the 640 drawdown, I would tell my dealers, 640 across, um, set it up as greens. I would ask them to make it green. And the reason for that is this. Let's go ahead and do a 640. I'll show you what this looks like. 640 drawdown with $100 on the line is be the right ratio for me. 640 looks like this. First hit pays 140. And down it comes, and the splits are easy. The money's already out there for the split. It's super simple to deal, okay? Remember, 640 was the starting point. Let's see where we are here. I don't know where that black chip came from. Did I have, I think I had a black out there instead of a green. Uh, all right, so one, two, 350. Hit number one, 375, back in the rack. Hit number two, pays 75 for five, and again, split it up. Again, look how easy this, for the dealers, this is so easy. This is like a no-brainer for them, right? There's 400, there's 500, there's your 640 back in your rack on that second hit. You're out in two hits. Next hit is 35 bucks, and you're in a profit town, right? You're in profit for a couple hundred bucks. 640 leads you to 100, 200 in profit. So 640 generates 200 and change in profit. 1080 generates 500 in profit on three rolls. It makes sense, it's about half. So 640 generates 250. If you have a hundred dollar line, that can generate a couple hundred bucks and there's your paycheck. So do you wanna reduce the overall risk by half and add a line bet to it or stay with the big ass bets up there and be three hits and home? That's gonna be the question with bet level. Tomorrow I'm gonna to do that. Tomorrow in the garage, the trial run's gonna be exactly that. We're gonna go 640 with a line bet, okay? And there we go. Um, and again, let's take a look at your questions here or your comments. So, um, let's see. Um, yeah, less like, I hear you there, right? It, it's good when you're, in, when you're in a groove. And again, you gotta set it up for your dealers to be easy, like I just showed you. If you're gonna do 640, you gotta go greens, right? If you're gonna do um, 128, of course, it's all reds. If you're gonna go to the bigger level, warn them. I'm gonna be drawing this thing down and set it up the way. Royce Burnett says, liking the come out working at 1200 level, um, hop in the sevens is an option. But again, if you're gonna work the come out to win 350 and you hop the reds for $25 each, really you gotta hop the reds for 100 each to make it work right. You're burning them, you might as well not work the come out, right? If you're gonna hop the reds for 100 bucks each or 50 bucks each, you're taking half that win which kind of, I don't know, it, it feels like it's too much of a bleed. Anyway, um, Tom Marco, poof, too risky, right? But again, lower it, 
lower it down, right? Let's, let's, let me show you, like, I, sh I think I showed this yesterday. The same thing, you buy in for, you know, whatever, a thousand bucks, check this out, right? Do it with reds. It's not that big a deal, right? We do it at red level, it's 128. 128 across in red, okay? First hit pays $28, and you bring it all to half, right? You go to, and again, I've got a $5 table, so I can do this, right? Everything gets split, 64 across. The next hit pays 15 for one, and you're down. And now I'm playing at 32 across, which again, seems silly in today's day and age, but there you are, 32 across. We started with 128. Where'd we get? 25, there's 50, 75, 100. There's 108 that we started with, or 120, sorry, 128. 128 that we started with. And we've got 10 bucks in profit, which doesn't seem like a lot, but again, you're playing small potatoes here. 10 bucks plus 32, you're at $42 in profit from 128. So you're, you've got a third of your money in profit. That's simple, not very expensive. Five dollar table, roll to win table, whatever. Simple way to basically make 50 bucks in a couple of rolls, right? That's super easy. And from here, you've seen me do this, right? I have done 32 across bubble crap simulation and turned 32 bucks across into 2,000 bucks, right? You get five or six eights or five or six nines. Those are at table max before you can breathe. They're, it happens so fast, right? So don't poo-poo the $32. It, it, that's actually a, a possibility. So AZ says too risky, right? Until you have the huge bankroll. And I agree. Until you have a big bankroll, it's very risky. But we're saying, let me go back to the other screen. We are saying in this strategy, Anthony, and maybe you uh, agree or disagree with this. Um, if I go out there, turn the light off. Um, if I go out there and say, I'm willing to risk one, one shot, I'll, I'll take the hit for the 1080 one time. If I PSO on the first shooter, or I seven out on the come out in the first shooter, bye-bye, sorry, get my egg sandwich and go home. That was a bad day. Um, it's either one shot, or we're gonna use the 3,000 that we bought in for. You might need extra money. You might lose the 300 bucks the first time. You might need to kind of dig in a little bit. It's there for, that's it. You're gonna risk, risk that money one time. You're not gonna risk the whole bankroll. You're gonna risk one, one slot of the 10 eight. Just a thought, just a thought. Um, okay, wanted to show you all that. Tomorrow um, on the, uh, on the uh, at the table segment, what I'm gonna do actually is, is I'm gonna run a strategy that Skill and Luck uh, gave me. I wanna show you what he was concocting in, in, uh, over text message with me. I'll give you one of his. Um, MSP also says, uh, actually works well drawing down one unit. Yes, um, the one unit drawdown requires three hits to be in profit. Two hits, you're not in profit. Three hits, you're in profit. The one unit drawdown's harder to deal, right? When I do the half drawdown, you see how I do like across the table and I say to take half my bets away and they go, they collapse the bets by half and they spread them out. Very easy to deal. Drawing down one unit from four is a pain in the ass, especially if you go from $25 units into red units and then they're changing colors and everything else. So one unit drawdown's good, but you gotta get all three hits. Definitely tougher to deal. Um, but I like that was the original drawdown that I did was that when I first put the strategy out there, I was doing one unit drawdowns. I've discovered that half works better uh, just for me anyway. So, um, yeah, I like the way it cuts to it, too. It's done. You're in and you're out. You're either going to win your paycheck today or you're not. And if you're going to go to Vegas and live on gambling, you either take it or you don't take it, I guess. Right. That's what it's going to be. You can, or you can go to grind. Right. Um, so we want to make sure it's not a pain in the ass for sure. OK, let's move ahead. Let's, um, let me see, let's get over here. Let's move ahead and talk about how to be good gamblers, all right? Um, your daily reminder of Johnny's core principles, right? We want to sit with goals. We want to have a good strategy. And again, we're talking strategy here, right? We're, we're like reasoning out the best ways to play this thing. And again, all strategies, I say this before, they all will lose. They all will lose on rhythm. They're going to lose as they're supposed to lose, right? You're going to... The seven's gonna get you when it gets you. You're gonna win when you win. If you're on the right side of the variant, which means you win more than you lose, like you're ahead of the seven, you're gonna show profit for that month. If you're behind the seven and you happen to have a 50-50 month on your win rate, you're gonna get beat that month. It's just the way that it is. But having the right bankroll can account for that. And I think that's what we say here. Having the right size bankroll accounts for it. You can either 
take another stab at it, or allow your bankroll to just say, hey, look, I can withstand that loss, and I'll be there later when the thing picks up for me. So bankroll and strategy are, are, are a combined force, right? Your mindset, how you connect those two, how you play, what kind of person you are mentally dictates a ton of that stuff, right? And I think discipline, as you know me, discipline is what leads to execution. So I think for success, we need all of it. Connect all the dots, right? Your knowledge of the game, your knowledge of theory, um, having some logic, understanding the math, and really grasping uh, how, how variance works, I think is a big thing. So all that works together. Now, we're gonna get into a little bit more mindset and discipline today. In, in, our, in our third session here in Gambling 201, what I wanna get into is bank accounting. We talked in our previous session about the 401g account, the 401g account, the single account called the 401g. And if you remember, the, the, the driving thing that I, that I said yesterday was, don't gamble with money that you can't afford to lose. Separate your gambling money from your house money. That's really important. Your life money that you need to live on and your gambling fund money has got to be completely separated. And I mean like separated with a wall, right? I'll talk about that uh, today here in just a minute. But I think the, the pure separation of those, of those two parts of your life are wickedly important, okay? Now, what does it look like for us? It's called KISS, the KISS method of accounting. It's keep it separated stupid. I wanna keep it simple, but I wanna keep it separate. I wanna make sure that not one cent of what I walk into a casino with, or not one cent of what I get on an airplane with to go travel to play somewhere has one thing to do with what's happening in my life, not one cent of it. So I keep it separated. I also, of course, keep it simple, but the separation, I think, is, is the key to this whole thing, okay? Now, here are my accounts. This is with the, um, this is with the uh, account numbers and the amounts grayed out, obviously, right? But here's the way I set my life up, okay? This is separate. I'll show you my, else, my other accounts in a minute. I separate everything into these four blocks. Number one, the actual 401g account. This is where my table play goes, okay? It's where my wins and losses are accounted for. It's if I have a marker, I don't have one now, I have in the past. The marker is attached to this account. Markers have to be attached to checking accounts, okay? So that is a checking account. That's what that is. It's a small interest bearing checking account, but it has the money in it that I will withdraw from to go play at the casino. That's where the money comes from, okay? What I generally do, and you'll see how the flow of this thing works, if I take $1,000 out and I win 1,100, guess what, $1,000 goes back. It's, it's, a, it's a cycle. Take a grand, win 1100, put a grand back. If I'm no longer in bankroll builder mode, we'll talk about the modes here in a minute, but that's account number one. Account number two is the excess account. In this account goes some percentage of my wins over my goal. Okay, my excess account carries experimental money for farting around. It carries my excursion money. So if I'm gonna jump on a cruise ship, which I will, that is funded from the excess account, not from my 401g account. My 401g account is my daily driver, right? Um, if I'm gonna go to DiceCon and I'm gonna play for four days like a crazy person, that comes out of excess. If I'm gonna go on a cruise, comes out of excess. That's where that money comes from. That is money that not only do I not need to live on, I don't need that money to gamble with. That's like literally, like we're, that's completely like off the rails degen money, right? So when I play in Vegas sometimes, you'll see I play a little differently than you probably see me here on the show. That's coming from excess. That money is light on fire money, okay? But I, I, I account for that ahead of time, okay? I have another account called expenses. And again, part of my wins over goal go into my expenses account. Generally speaking, it's if I win, let's say my goal today was 500 and I won 700, that's 200 bucks over goal, 100 goes into excess, 100 goes into expenses. And I split, I split the excess win into those two accounts and I grow my expense account and I grow my excess account over time as I'm winning, okay? My venture card has miles on it, right, obviously. Um, so that's with a card that, it's a credit card that I use to purchase gas, food, my travel, my accommodations. It's, the, it's actually the expense card, okay? That card, I use it because it got, it got those miles. My expense account pays the card. You follow how that works? So if you picture a day at the casino for me, let's just, put fake numbers out there. I go to the casino, I pull a thousand out of 401G, and the flow of money goes this. Withdraw a thousand, 
win 700. Let's say I have a great day. Let's say, actually, let's lie. Let's not lie. Let's say my goal was 20%. Let's say my goal was 200 bucks and I won 300. Okay. So I won more than my goal. What happens? I walked in with a grand at a 401g. I'm walking out with 1300. The thousand goes back into the 401g. It's a net zero transaction. Okay. Now I got the, my goal, my 300 bucks goal. Well, $200 of that was my goal to win for the day. That goes home. That goes with me and Kathy. That's like buying the TV set. That's or whatever. That if I'm living on it, that goes into my 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 home. Ch- that's like my paycheck, right? That that extra money. If I'm building a bankroll, I put that 200 bucks back into my 401g account. If I'm not building that bankroll, once that gets to a ceiling, by the way, the 401g, once it's at 50 or 100k, that's where it stays. I don't need to keep building it. It gets to a point where it's good. That win, that goal win, comes home, and that's my whatever money. Now. The extra money, if I won 300 instead of 200, 50 goes into excess, 50 goes into expenses. And I build up my excess and my expense accounts with every excess win that I've got. Okay, That way, a few times a year, we get to fly somewhere and do our thing. A few times a year, I get to go play like a crazy person. That's where those two accounts come from. The 401g account really, most of the time for me, is a zero sum. It stays where it is. It's at its level. I withdraw, I redeposit, and it just stays where it is all the time. If I'm trying to build it, that 200 bucks that I won, instead of coming home with me to go buy a TV set, goes back into the G account, and we try and build it to 10, to 15, to 20,000, and kind of get that thing rolling up. That's how I manage my, my gambling. It's a flow. Out of the G account, go play at the table, back into the G account, fill excess, fill expenses. The net profit that I was going for That's my decision. Do I take it home with me and spend it with Kathy? Or do I put it back in the G account and grow that thing up? The higher the G account, the bigger the withdrawals, the bigger your bets, the bigger your spread, okay? The venture card, the actual credit card, that's what I use to make purchases. Food, gas, lodging, flights, cruise ships, whatever else. That's done on the card so I can earn the miles. And the expense savings account pays that card. It's on auto pay. I have those, at these, these, Two accounts, by the way, right here. Um, let me get this set up. These two, uh, let's actually do that in red. These two here, that's on auto pay. Like it literally, the expense account pays the venture card account every month. That's that's like I don't even I don't even look at that. It just happens automatically, right? The expense account or the the excess account here. This is my 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 what I call fun money account. That thing is what we go play with when I see you all. This right here. This is the stable line, right? This thing goes up a little bit here, down a little bit here. It's pretty, pretty stable. Once it's at level, it stays at level. That's how I run my gambling life. I don't take big hits in the 401G. If I take a grand out of it, I'm not usually losing that grand, right? I'll, I'll do a little bit of heartbeat in here, right? But I'm not putting that thing at extreme risk. And, I, and this is the way I've done it most of my life. I never had the excess account before. Ken talked me to start doing the excess account. I used to do my trips from expenses and from 401G. I've added this account now um, to keep this thing um, a little more separated, a little more, make it make a little more sense. That's how I think you manage your accounts right now. As far as what kind of accounts these are, it's important to think about that, right? This one here should be, I'm gonna put IB, an interest bearing account. It's gonna have, and all of them actually should be, right? If you can do it, a money market account, right? Where you can have, uh, transactionless um, or feeless transactions. So you can actually invest that and have that money working for you while you're not gambling with it and growing as it grows, but be able to withdraw and deposit without transaction fees. If you can find one of those. I've got one, the way I've got this thing set up, it's it's a partial of that. Um, and I considering making these two actually CD accounts and having like a every threshold uh, drop a CD in there. Anyway, That's how I manage my 401g accounts. I think it makes sense to keep everything separate and have every account have a purpose behind it. And the impetus for this, or the idea for this, comes from Dave Ramsey. And those of you um, who know me um, know that I like Dave Ramsey. Um, He's actually changed my life. And I'll give you a little personal story here. Um, In my personal life, I work the exact same way. Okay, we, My wife and I had, a while back, some financial problems. And not problem problems, but it was like, we weren't managing our money very well. We were like, where's everything going? We, we couldn't really, we were on the same page. And we got into it and, and here's how we've set things up now. This is a beautiful thing, right? Our incoming account, we have an account, literally in my bank, it's called incoming. 
um, my paycheck, her paycheck, um, dividend income, all the excess monies that we get go into the incoming account. If I sell a treadmill, that money goes into the incoming account. This account is like where everything kind of starts from, right? Um, let's throw a number out there. Let's say that in a given month, it gets $10,000 put into it, whatever that number happens to be from, from all the money that comes in. Well, I have an account called main, okay? My main account, mortgage, electric bill, car payment, insurance, all the things that we know, all of our basically fixed expenses. Well, guess what? In the first of the month, my banking account, uh, my, my, my bank system sets up to automatically do a deposit. There's an, or an automatic withdrawal that comes out of my main account or my incoming account into my main on the first of the month. That main account just gets drained. The month, whoever is, whatever, the electric bill, the water bill, all those things are auto pulled out of main. So incoming feeds main, okay? Incoming also, and, I, and, it, and it's an exact amount. I give it exactly, I know what it takes we call it the Cocos Corporation. I know what it takes the Cocos Corporation to operate on a, on a given month. That exact number comes out of incoming and goes into main, okay? Also from incoming, every month on the first of the month, we feed our expenses account. This is our, this is, for us, it's, it's, a, it's a thousand bucks, right? 1,000, goes into our expenses account. That's groceries, that's Amazon crap, that's buying stuff for people's birthdays, that's all the stuff that we kind of just spend during the course of a month. That's our expenses account, and again, automatically first of the month from incoming, it gets fed in, okay? We also feed an entertainment account. And again, this is less. For us, it's 250 that goes into that account every month. First of the month, 250 goes into in entertainment. And that grows. Some months we put more, some months less. It depends on what's going on. That's when I take Kathy to dinner, we go see a concert, we wanna go to a movie, whatever that is. This account accounts for that. At the end of all of that, we also feed, I'm gonna try another arrow here. We feed ourselves a personal account each. We each take, I'm gonna put X dollars from that incoming account. We each have a personal account that she and I both have a card for, our own cards for. I don't even know what's in her account. It's my gas for my car, it's my candy, it's whatever the hell I wanna do. That's my McDonald's money, right? All of that starts at one spot. Everything goes into the incoming, the first of the month, I spread it all out. It goes here, 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 exactly what the accounts need. And at the end of it, at the bottom, I have one of these, an emergency account, which is three months worth of all of that. That's how I live, okay? If God forbid I lose my job, which I may in the next couple of weeks, this emergency account will allow me to live for three months and, and still do the same move, okay? That's the move that I make in my personal life, okay? Again, it all goes into one account. And every month I budget and I, and I feed it out. This account here, by the way, is growing all the time. It's a savings account because if we take in 10 grand and I, and I, and I spread out 8,600 between the other accounts, it's got an extra grand in it and it grows and grows and grows. That ends up feeding the emergency account. It ends up feeding retirement accounts. That's my personal life, right? That, and that works really, really well for me, right? Well, guess what? That's the exact same thing as this account system. The 401G account works the same way. Money goes into the G account. It is a source of all of the things. From that account, we feed the excess, we feed the expenses, we pay off our travel stuff, right? It works the same way. Notice, and I didn't tell you this, but these are different banks. This 401G account is at one bank. My personal accounts, different bank. I cannot transfer between them. I put that wall in there. I cannot transfer between the accounts. I cannot, right? I'm not gonna make the mistake that many gamblers make. I'm not gonna allow myself the ability to even pull money out of my life account into a gambling account. If I do, if I make a withdrawal of a thousand or two thousand bucks out of some account to go gambling with, Kathy will see it. There's gonna be a withdrawal slip or a withdrawal notice coming out of the other account, right? That's how we separate it, right? Over here is gambling shit, over here is personal shit, and I never, never, let the two intermix. And I think it's a good way to do it. I think that doing this top-down approach, filling one account and having it feed everything else works for my personal. It works very good for my gambling. One account that feeds everything else. And again, I look at the 401G account when I withdraw and go to work at the casino, the same thing as me going to work and putting money in the incoming account here. It's just like my work paycheck, my casino paycheck. That's how I deal with this. 
And I think it's a good way to think about how to run your gambling life. If you want to go gambling all the time, or especially if you're retired, um, or you want to do this more often than just a once a year trip to Vegas, you've got to manage yourself in a way that makes good sense. Okay, so there's the run up to that. Now, to set things up again, I think you have to have a separate bank account, like I said, separate bank, period. No transfer connection, no way to get money between the two banks. I think it's a, it's a critical thing. I think um, you can do this online. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Capital One, that you can set them all up online, okay? Um, you wanna find a national bank, okay? And again, your main, your main one, your 401G account, needs to be checking account. If you're gonna do marker play, or betting in sports books, you wanna connect your bank account to it, it's gotta be a checking account to do that, okay? If you can have the other accounts be interest-bearing savings, that's great. Money market even better. Um, and again, I recommend a nationwide bank or a credit union to do this with. You wanna be able to show up in Vegas or Biloxi or Atlantic City or wherever you're going, find a Wells Fargo machine or a Capital One machine or a, or a, I think it's NCUA machine to make sure you can withdraw without fees. Okay, you wanna make sure you're avoiding ATM fees on your withdrawals and your deposits, okay? Um, ideally, universal access. Wells Fargo's everywhere, Bank of America's everywhere, the credit unions are everywhere. Find um, and, and search, right? The bank you're gonna pick, does it have ATMs in Vegas? Does it have ATMs in Biloxi? You kind of get to it in AC. That's an important thing. Otherwise, you're paying stupid fees and, and bleeding money out, okay? That's the, the setup piece of this thing, right? And you wanna, again, check your destinations for that. Um, to use the account, again, here's what I say, and I'll, we'll go into this in graver detail later on, but your G account, your main account, it's gonna fund all of your sessions, okay? You're gonna apportion that account down to your percentage of win, or your, your, your goal percentage, or your withdrawal percentage. Again, let's use 10,000 as, as an example. $10,000 in the account. You could say, we're gonna do a 10% a ten percent run, which means you're always gonna pull out 1,000 and play with 1,000. Or you can say, I'm willing to do uh, more of a 20% thing, and you'll pull out 2,000 bucks every time, which means you have five, five, five trips in your G account or 10 trips in your G account. You should always pull some known percentage out of that and have that be the thing that drives your goal each day, drives your strategy, okay? I would say this, keep meticulous notes. Prepare and plan for everything. This is so important. I said it yesterday to you. The separation is in the preparation. And a key word today, of course, is separation. Separate your gambling money from your house money. Separate your gambling money into multiple accounts. Keep yourselves organized. Otherwise, you're just withdrawn from some ATM card. I have no idea where your freaking money goes. We can't have that. We can't have that, okay? Now, I've given you a tool to use to help you with this. Now, of course, your regular bank accounts have got a complete log. It's a good idea to practice this. If you wanna use this tool as a real tool, then by all means, go for it, okay? But at the very least, practice. Let me go ahead and, and share my screen and show you um, what I'm talking about. Give me a second here to, to open up my, my browser um, and I will get you going here. Um, let's go to, let's go here. Still on the drawing pad, it looks like. Um, here is casinogaming.tv. I'm gonna go ahead and log out. Log out of this thing and show you how this works. Um, let's go to casinogaming.tv. Now, you will see a green login button here. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. A green login button. If you have an account on our Discord, this login button will work for you. How do you do that? You go to the community tab and join Discord, it's free. Right, you click this, you join in Discord, now you have an account. Then you can log in. And it's gonna say, hey, you're a Discord user. Is it okay to log in? You're gonna say yes, okay? It'll ask you for permissions, you authorize it. All this does is let the app know that you're a live person, okay? Now that you're in, you have an account. I go to my tool section. There's a tool section here, and it's one of them is called the 401G. Let's go there, okay? It's a 401G account, so I'm gonna actually delete all the accounts. I'm gonna delete what I've got here. There's no, no reason to have them. I'll show you what I do. A simulated account. Again, this is good to practice with for you. It says here, set up as many account trackers as you like and track your casino or crapsy play. Double click a transaction to delete. Here we go, watch. I'm gonna add an account. I'm gonna call this account the 401G account. We're gonna create that. Bam, makes an account called 401G. I'm gonna add another account. We're gonna call this one um, uh, XS, E-X-C-E-S-S. 
Let me make one more account here called expenses. And now I've got three accounts that are set up, okay? And let me zoom out a little bit so you can see them all. There we go. As you're simulating your play, you can do this. Let's say, okay, let's say today. What is today? The 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. We're going to put $10,000 in our bank account as an initial deposit. We'll save that. Now our G account's got a grand in it, okay? Let's say we go to the casino. Let's say that I go to the casino today on the 14th. I do a $2,000 withdrawal today. Notice my account balance changes to 8,000. I've got two grand in my brack. Off I go to the casino. And let's say we have a good day. Let's say we win 2,500 bucks today. Okay, cool. Well, what do we do? We can look at this and say, well, my actual earnings, the, the, the 500 bucks that I earned from that, I was trying to win, let's say 20%. Let's say I was, let's say I was trying to win 250. Yeah, we'll say, we'll say 250. Um, and we won 300. Let's use that as the example. What we can do is say the 200 bucks goes home. First thing I do, let's deposit the $2,000 back. Put the two grand back in the bank. Whew, 401G is covered. We're good. 200 bucks goes into my pocket. I'm bringing it home. Give it to Kathy. 50 bucks goes here. $50 deposit here. And the same thing for my expenses account, $50 deposit. So I've taken that win that we had and I spread $100 of it between expenses and excess. I put the money that I took out to gamble with back in the G account. It stays flat. I want this thing to be flat all the time. Whatever else I won, my goal win comes home. Now, if I'm building my bankroll, I might have put 1200 bucks back in the G account to build it back up again, but I have the choice to go either direction. I can take some home, I can rock excess, I can, I can load my expenses account. I have choices with where to do with the money here, right? And again, how much you want to split between them is up to you, okay? Once you take your goal off of the top, spread that money around, okay? Use this little online tracker to practice this. If I were you, what I would do to get used to doing it, and it's, again, it's hard, put 10 grand in a, in a fake account like this, play craftsy with it. Every time you buy into a craftsy table, whatever the buy-in was at the table, pull it out of this account. Play Crapsy, and when you're done with your session, spread this out and see when you're playing Crapsy with Jeff and with uh, Ed and those guys and with Alfredo and with me and with Chris, how does these accounts react to your Crapsy play? This is a great way to track your practice sessions, okay? It's a great way to practice your, tra your practice sessions. Could you use it to, to do your real life accounts? Sure, but you, your bank accounts already have all the transactions in it. This is really just here for you to, to have a, a good way of logging your life, right? A good way to kind of do it. And it's a free tool. Like I said, I wrote it. Um, it's a free tool. Do what you want to with it, right? I think that's that's the idea um, is to give you a place to practice and a place to kind of, uh, you know, do, put the work in. So uh, there it is, guys. That is, uh, that's what I got to say for today, okay? Separate, separate, separate. And again, the very first slide I gave you on this thing, right? was keep it separated, stupid, and also keep it simple, stupid. That 401G account, like I said, that level stays clean. I try and keep that thing at the same all the time. Withdraw, deposit, withdraw, deposit. It only goes up if I'm trying to build, right? But if I want to build, the idea is if it goes from 10 to 20 grand, guess what? My buy-ins, instead of 1,000, they're 2,000. And instead of green chips, it's black chips. And black chips beget more black chips. And now you're buying, you know, you're buying a Tempur-Pedic bed instead of, instead of buying a, a, a shitty TV, right? That's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're building the, the 401G to have more money to pull out, to bet bigger money, to win bigger money. That's what that thing is for. It's, it's to support you. We talk about how your bankroll kind of accounts for your wins and losses. That's the reason why you build it. You build it up so you can afford to buy in for a little more to increase the size of those wins. As long as you're moving money around in what I think is a smart way, you're going to be okay. All right, so there, there it is all. That is my, that is my, my accounting lecture today. Hopefully that was a, that was a, um, a good one, I think. <laughs> I think uh, um, I needed to say that to you as much as I needed to hear it said. Like sometimes 
I think sometimes putting your foot in the ground and reminding yourself why you do things is important. So saying that out loud to me just further cements the way that I believe, that, we, that, that I run my life and how I keep my money. Um, hopefully that, again, makes sense to you. And again, pass it along. You may already be doing this. You may already be super smart. You may already be very organized and all of that. You probably know somebody who isn't. You might have kids. Jacob's here. Wait a minute. Jacob, your kids are too young to do this, right? But my son's 25, right? My son, at 25 years old, you know, making you know, first, first job money, is starting to do this. He's got his things separated. He's, got his, he's doing all, all the things. Um, it, trust me, it's such a... It's such a, a, a how do I say this right? It's such a, just a stress reliever, right? Look at this personal account thing, right? My wife and I haven't thought about money in 17 years, right? Now that we've gone to this kind of a system where we just all, we both feed one account, that account feeds everything else, we always know where everything is. There's never a question, can we afford, do we have? It's all there and it's all segmented. There's no like, don't go to the store because we have a check pending. There's never that because Maine is what Maine is. Expenses are what they are. It's completely separated, right? And again, my gambling, my gambling life, I work it the same way. If I can't afford to travel, if I got nothing in my expenses account and I can't afford to come see you, I ain't coming to see you. It's the way it is. I'm not going to dig into my 401g account now to go fly. If I have expense account coverage for it, if I want enough to, to make sure I can pay for it, paying for it, okay? We talked yesterday about how do you fund your, your account. It's hard to build a G account from just gambling, right? I have lots of other outside income sources that I can use to kind of funnel money into that thing, side hustles and that sort of thing. Um, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, even with a side hustle. 75% to the G, 15% to expenses in excess or whatever you're gonna do. So there it is, guys. That's all of it. I think that's all of it. Um, let me go to questions and answers here. And there's a bunch of questions out there that I saw and we are gonna get to all of them. Um, let me search for the PCs here. What do we have for PCs? We have um, ticket prices for the cruise. I will get back to you on that. Um, ideally, if you've got a Caesars account or a station account or a previous cruise account, if you've got some miles and, and points built up, we take that into account and we, we're trying to get everybody comped if we can. So that's the, that is the idea there, okay? Um, I can't zoom in, unfortunately. Um, you'll have to you'll have to pinch and zoom your phone. Sorry about that. Um, I may though at some point put all this out in like a. I was talking to Jennifer about this actually about releasing when I get done with this whole series, releasing it all as a as a course, right? Like a legit like online course. And in that case, I could put PowerPoints out and I can put out uh, worksheets that would have all this stuff in it. And that would be, I can't do it on YouTube, obviously. There's no worksheets, but um, I think I want to put some worksheets out. So um, let's see, based on my stance with the five count, what's the difference between taking one hit and trying again the next day? Um, yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. Um, and I did it, like today's a good example, right? I went out there, I went 4-0 today. I did four sessions. One thing we're gonna talk about is the idea of this expanding session bankroll. When I get into bankroll management here, we're gonna talk about that. Let's say I bought in for 2K or, or, or the 3K, right? We won the 500 bucks. Now my bankroll is either at 3,500 and I walk with 500 in profit or my bankroll is 3,500 and my next bets up top are 15 or $1,600. I can take that extra and, and build and build and build and have higher win goals in the same session. There's no need to just run away. What you're saying here, right? You can play out there three or four more times. The difference is this though. If you win 500, go back out there for 1,200 again you're at the risk of being down 600 bucks if you burn. You gotta start over again. That's why you bring extra money. But um, if you can pull it off twice in the same day or three times in the same day, why not? I, I'm with you. And that's a thing that we will have to pursue when we talk about the paycheck play coming up. Do I just keep rolling with it and repeat the sessions until we have a bad one? I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. Um, let's see. Um, he says, Victor, if you have any real wealth and you use markers, it's not really that separate. It is separate in this respect. Um, and, and again, I'm going to have, um, I'm gonna have a, a guest on here, I don't know when, maybe in a couple of weeks, um, who works as a, uh, in the casino credit department, who will give us chapter and verse about how markers work, right? But the, the essential piece of a marker is that you've got to have an account, a checking account, registered with the casino. 
And the marketplace says, okay, they, they say, you've got 50K in your account. You can have a marker for X, not the whole 50, but they'll give you a marker for 10K or whatever it's gonna be. You walk to the table, here's my marker. They give you 10K in chips. Nothing changes in your life. You play your game out. You win $11,000, you push back 10K, pay off your marker, right? You bring $1,000 with you. That's kind of the way that that works. If you lose the 10 grand, you've got 30 days to pay that money back. Because they are attached to your checking account, your 401G account, if you default on paying back that marker in 30 days, they will pull it out of your account. They're attached to it. They can put a hold on those funds. That's why it's gotta be checking. It's gotta be an insured account. And to get it all set up, you gotta, if you're gonna play market play, you've gotta get that set up. So again, I'll have a Concedo credit person on with us to really explain the nitty gritty of that, what it requires, how you set it up. It's a good thing to think about market play. If you have, like, let's pretend I got a marker at Caesars and a marker at Station. Um, and let's pretend that you're buying in for five grand or 10 grand every time. I don't wanna walk around with 5K in my pocket, okay? I mean, there was a point in my life when I was 200 pounds and I actually had muscles. Now I'm 55 years old, and I'm losing weight, right? I'm not, I'm not running around with 5K in my pocket looking to pick a fight or, or defend myself against three people, right? Having the marker play, you don't gotta worry about that, right? You take a marker, play your marker, take back the little bit of profit that you earned on that thing. And that's what you got in your pocket, right? That's, it, it can be a safety measure too. It can be a convenience feature number three. You don't gotta worry about it. Just show up at the casino, pull your marker out, play your money and go home. It could be very simple, <laughs> right? Um, it's a fee-less ATM in that respect, as long as you've got the bank account to back it up. So again, we'll have more, we'll have somebody here talking about it with us who can really answer questions. That will be a day where I say to you ahead of time, the casino credit guy's coming on on Thursday. Get your questions ready, and we'll ask him a bunch of questions. It'll be a, like an interactive session with him because I, I have questions about it too. Um, that will help. He'll help us get it back. So um, your problem is getting cash back in the bank. Yeah, I hear you there, man. Win the money, put it back in, right? Um, Wayland's way craps. Um, I did it today. I, I reset the bankroll today four times <laughs> and one. Um, I also like the idea of compounding it, right? Buying in for three grand, winning five hundred. Now I'm at thirty five hundred. I go back out there and my goal is to recoup the 3,500 and win a little extra. And you can actually, if you have a good session like we did today, today was one of those great days, you can compound that bankroll by stacking up your wins and making the 3,500 your new starting point, not 3,000 your new starting point. And having a higher starting point, higher win goal as the session goes on, that's totally a thing. So um, yeah, I just carry the 5K when I'm with you because you know, you're a big, big, strong badass. I got to get behind you, right? Actually, I'll tell you what. I carry 20K. If it was you and Joe, can you imagine getting behind D-Gen and Joe from Crash Master? Joe is like a level 57 black belt and some crazy shit. He can pinch a nerve in your neck and kill you, right? Um, get behind those two guys. The entourage. Get some, get some of them sunglasses. Give them both black coats, and that would be... That's a picture I want to... I want to get a picture of me walking behind you two. 100% buying you guys black suits and sunglasses, the things in the ears and me behind you, counting the money. That's gonna be a, a that'll be the new website picture. All right, guys, that's it. Nine o'clock, we're out of here. Um, that was a good show. I think it was a good show. Hopefully the information was solid for you. Um, and again, just be smart. Separate your money from your life. Your gambling money and your life money, not the same thing. Gambling money, I like the trickle down. I like the spread effect. I like keeping control of things. I like keeping my 401G account on, on the steady, on the steady. I don't necessarily keep building it once it's at a point. I get it to a point that that's my, that is my, my connection point to my, to my, uh, my fun money. So anyway, there you all. Happy Wednesday. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, hug your spouse. Go buy them something fun. Enjoy some chocolate. And uh, you'll have a great day. Love you all. God bless. See you tomorrow. Bye.